Hi, my name is Jane and I left a 7K job and what I thought was a really luxurious life to become a digital nomad. When I picked up the insurance job, it was really because I wanted a job that could help me grow. You know, those three and three and a half years were really, really eye-opening. Very, very amazing for me. I learned so much. Earned quite a bit of money also because of how the industry is. The car, the condo, everything wasn't what I wanted, but it came with the marriage. The reason I left was to go to the US with him. So we had already planned the trip and my ticket was already bought. The marriage fell apart just before, like days before leaving for the US. And I remember thinking, well, I can... I can just like sit in Singapore and like sob about the marriage or I can get my butt to US and then from US get my butt to Mexico. So that's how Mexico started. Uh, I had no plans basically. I my, my only plan was to heal and it was to really cut away the noise back home, the gossip and kind intentions to help. I, I needed distance from that. How I decided where to travel was really a lot of times based on the friends that I met. So even Puerto Escondido, never heard before, you know, and I only went because I met at least three people who told me, yeah, you should go and we are going. So we are going tomorrow, you want to go? You want to go, then let's go together. In Puerto Escondido, also no plans. And then one of my friends said, okay, we are going to this island called Chakawa. You want to come? You want to come in? Let's just go. The plan was just to go with the flow, to at all times listen to myself, listen to what I wanted to do. You know, I think not planning opens you to opportunities that you may not have known of. Not planning also gives you a lot of mental space to just say that I want to focus on my intention, which at that point for me was to heal. I stayed in the UK during the lockdown period uh, because I was stuck there basically. That's when I started doing Workaways. Workaways is basically a platform that um, connects voluntary opportunities with travellers. The first one I did was babysitting, so I basically just babysat um, a five-year-old. Um, the next one, I did actually did a bit of construction work. I joined a group of volunteers who were helping to renovate a, a Victorian house that so was 150 years old. But they're all kinds of workaway jobs. I mean, we raised chickens. Uh, I was there when the baby chicks just hatched, so we had to build the enclosure, build the cage. I think I remember that was the period of time where I realised that, you know, we can put three days of work into building one chicken enclosure and once the chickens don't use it anymore, this enclosure is not going to be used anymore. And I remember feeling like, wow, so wasted, uh, you know, just going to throw it out. I realised in Singapore, a lot of things that we put our energy into, we want them to last. Sometimes certain things end for a reason as well. Those memories are still kept beautiful because they, they lasted however long they did. So I got that from Chicken, chicken Cook. <laughs> from all this self-awareness or all this like learning about myself, right, I realised that I really like working with, with children, anything education related. I also really enjoyed travel. So when I picked up this current job that I'm doing right now, which is a business development manager, right, to help with the education platform, that's where I see the combination of all of my interests and all of my skills coming together. And right now, at this moment, I feel like I'm the perfect person for the job. Like the job was created for me, you know. And it was really, really interesting that I didn't even look for it. Then, technically, they found me. So I told them, okay, it all sounds really good, but I don't want to live in Singapore. So can I do this remotely? And they said yes. So I fell into this category of digital nomad. What I really, really enjoy about my current life is that I have a lot of freedom. I've kind of traded what people think is security and stability and comfort for freedom. My day-to-day, -day, really every day is an adventure. You know, so after I finish work, then you know you can you can either choose to go to the mountains, to go hiking, or you can go to the sea. And everywhere I go, I'm constantly looking for conversations to happen. Then you're constantly learning something. And I think this is what I really, really enjoy.
In Albania, hitchhiking is very common. We wanted to go to this uh, waterfall canyon area, Osumi. To get there, we needed to take first take a bus, and then from the bus, literally the instruction is you hitchhike. <laughs> so we managed to hitchhike a guy. He was collecting like pebbles and stones from the river. There wasn't anything shifty about him, but I just kind of felt that there's something, there's something. The minute we got into his truck, he told us, okay, I'm sorry I cannot bring you to where you want to go, but I can I can bring you halfway. And then later, he kept asking us, oh, um, do you want to stop here? Like, have you seen this place? So he brought us to like five other spots that we didn't intend to go to that were the most beautiful places I had ever been to. Later on, when it got very, very dark, he was like, okay, you know what? I think it's too late already. I think you should stay at my house. <laughs> so, that was like, I was like, <laughs> red flag, <laughs> red flag. <laughs> but then he brought us to his mom's house and it was so beautiful meeting his mom because, um, you know, she didn't speak a word of English. She was speaking to me in Albania the entire time. But she was just like hugging us, you know, and like giving us kisses on the cheeks and serving us coffee. And then, you know, they brought us out for dinner and he even sacrificed his bedroom for us so that we can sleep in his bedroom. And and to me, that was confirmation that if I just gave in to my fear and I just said like, you know, no, I think better don't, better don't. I would have never had this, you know, exchange. It is very true that certain things can happen sometimes. But just because you can die in a car doesn't mean that you will never get into a car. It was during the COVID pandemic situation. A few of my Latin American friends and I were talking about how the situation back home is. In my mind, I already had like certain answers that might come out but I really didn't imagine how drastic it was going to be my Chilean friend was telling us about how because of COVID you know everybody's losing their jobs you know they don't have enough food to eat people are rioting you can just sense that we are like you know we don't really know what to say to make matters worse I kid you not in that exact moment I received a message from our Singapore government that I was getting $500 what do you do? what do you say? That was one important lesson that I learned. You know, I kept asking myself, what do you really need to be happy? I just felt that in my mind, there was a certain ideal that if you do this, you will be happy. So the number one re realization that backpacking taught me was, you really don't need so much to be happy. What makes you happy will always change. What might make me happy now, living this nomad life, might not make me happy when it comes to the time where I want kids. Because if you are making plans for a future you instead of the present you, then you might not even know if your future you is going to enjoy it. So why, why work so hard for something you might not even know you're going to enjoy? I know a lot of friends who are very jaded, very burnt out from work, you know, because at my age, we've been working for a good six to seven years. Most of them are at, at the decision in their lives where they, it's either they go up or they go out. And a lot of times, they don't want to go out because they are afraid they cannot get back in. Just to take a one-month break off work is scary to a lot of people. If you feel that you are at a crossroads, don't just look at your limited options and think that this is all that you can choose from. The whole point of my article or, or my sharing right was not to get people to be digital nomads. I don't think that's a solution for a lot of people. And I think travel is only one solution. You are really physically putting yourself out of your comfort zone. So I think that is a very good way to know yourself. And then slowly slowly you get to figure out more um, what you really like and what you really want. But really my solution is not the solution to your problems. My solution is only what was presented to me. It's more about being resourceful, meaning looking at your current resources, looking at your current uh, strengths, and figuring out what could be a better alternative, and whether or not you dare to take that alternative.